Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be talking about the Log4j exploit or vulnerability which affects libraries in Java that are used to help servers log information into logs and we've recently been advised by security committees that these libraries can be used to log user information, infect a server with ransomware, hack a server, or even add malware. Let's take a moment to look at the CVE for this vulnerability. The current description says the Apache log 4 j 2 features that are used in configuration, log messages and parameters do not protect against attacker controlled LDAP and other JNDI related endpoints. An attacker who can control log messages or log message parameters can execute arbitrary loaded code from LDAP servers. That is a pretty big deal. So let's talk a little bit about how that all works. I think we should first start off by talking about what log4j is. Log4j comes from Apache and is used on many, many servers that run Java and helps log information into files, which inherently helps server administrators use a very powerful library to get all sorts of logging information. Now, the big problem here is that this log4j exploit potentially affects millions of devices and servers, as you have probably seen before when installing Java, perhaps to play one of your favorite games, Minecraft. You've seen that Java powers more than 3 billion devices. So you can imagine the scale of this vulnerability and how bad it could potentially be, since there's probably millions, if not tens of millions of devices that use log4j, whether they want to or not. So what we'll talk about now is how a user can actually exploit this vulnerability, what you can do to protect yourself, and how bad is this really? Well, let's just start off by saying that it, we know it's pretty bad. Interestingly enough, I mentioned Minecraft, and it seems that this Java vulnerability was actually discovered on one of the most popular games out there, Minecraft, where users could issue some code on remote Minecraft servers, which leads to all sorts of security vulnerabilities. Like I said, we could probably imagine that there's over a million to 10 million devices affected, perhaps even more. Mainly the place that this is really bad is in servers that are production environments or that are used at massive companies, which have a lot of data storage, including user sensitive info. One of the biggest issues here is that a user could use JNDI, which is the Java naming directory interface to fetch objects from a malicious server. So what does that look like? Well, we have a server here. Let's just pretend this is our nice Minecraft server or perhaps an Amazon server that contains sensitive user information. Normally what happens is your computer makes a request out to the internet and through the internet, we're routed to a server and that server responds to your request and you get information. Well, in this log 4J exploit, what a computer could do is instead it could actually use the JNDI interface to send down a command which would then fetch objects from a malicious server that has nothing to do with the one you're accessing and allow a remote user to run or execute a piece of malicious code on the server containing log4j. So let's say someone malicious, perhaps a hacker, sends down a string using, let's say, dollar sign, curly brace, and then using J and D I and LDAP in an LDAP server. They specify the server, so some server.com, and they specify what object they want to load. Well, what they could potentially do with this, if they sent this down, all of a sudden, this Minecraft server would go and execute this to grab an object from perhaps another server. So let's say it goes and executes that code grab some code from this server. So then here's a little piece of code that then gets transferred over back to the original, let's just call this a Minecraft server. So a hacker sent this over, said load an object from a different server. It loads an object from the different server. Let's call that object a piece of code, which is probably malicious code into the Minecraft server, and now your Minecraft server is executing that malicious code. We can all now see where this is going. 
The malicious code could be ransomware, malware, or straight up a tunnel for hacking. So let's write those down. You know, ransomware, malware, hacking tunnel, or just gathering user information. We can see how bad this is getting by going through a scenario here. So how do you fix this? Well, basically, if you're running a server that uses Log4j, make sure that you have updated Log4j to version 2.15 or above and update Java. This vulnerability is going to affect users of Java who haven't been updating and are using Log4j version 2.15. You can imagine that there's gotta be millions of servers out there that need to be patched. We already know that some of the affected products, so let's write those out, include Red Hat services, Apache products, VMware products, Amazon servers, and even Cloudflare. Of course, there are many more companies out there and individuals who are affected, so heed the warning and update your log 4J services. I really wanted to go through one of these scenarios so you can just feel for how easy it can be for a hacker to use this vulnerability. It's pretty wild that this has happened and that we're learning about this now. It's incredible if this was actually discovered in Minecraft. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Typically, government advisory boards will actually allow big companies to know about these exploitations first before actually making it publicized just so they have a chance to patch against these sort of exploits but that doesn't mean that every company gets around to it we're all too familiar with some of the huge user information breaches that have happened in the past with companies and we might be seeing more here soon well hopefully you learned about the exploit here and how to protect yourself. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.